okay hello everyone so so far in this course until now we learn how to classify differential equations how to solve differential equations we analyze the slope fields of a differential equation but really we didn't discuss about mathematical models applications of differential equations as i have explained in the first very first video in this course that differential equations are highly connected with real life situations now ordinary differential equation is a differential equation where you have an unknown function with respect to one independent variable now that's the simplest differential equations but differential equations altogether generally can have many variables like i like our real life situations if you want to build a car if you want to build a car engine then the work that you work that engine does and the heat that engine absorbs those things are variables your mental health the variables to your mental health are your rest, your workload, your pressure coming from your school, your family background. All these variables comes into play to you in your mental health. So everything in our life has variables, independent, dependent variables. And I don't think you will be surprised if I say that most of these real life phenomena is modeled by differential equations now how to build up a mathematical model that's a question so there are several steps we have to identify these variables dependent independent variables we have to identify them and not only variables there could be some factors that affecting your model affecting your not the model but the real life phenomena then you make observations you make assumptions hypothesis okay so if you want to make a car you identify the variables that affect your car engine okay then you make observations you do surveys you make hypothesis you are going to assume assume how the heat's going to flow how the oil going to work and you're going to come up to a situation where you have to compromise okay you cannot build a perfect engine where you know you don't waste any energy and it works like a superman it doesn't work right so you have to come come to a compromisation and then you formulate the mathematical model you solve the mathematical model or you build a, a build an engine a model engine and you see whether this model engine works right you look at the product output of this engine and you know if it is not satisfying you know you're gonna go back and you change your hypothesis change your assumptions and reformulate the model and then present the product right so the same thing happens in mathematics also you write an equation with assumptions and then you know you're gonna solve it and you look at the data that is given and then you compare your solution and you make a comparison how good or bad your solution is then you're going to change or keep your equation depending on it okay so in this course uh, in this week we are going to learn about six or seven mathematical models the first mathematical differen differential equation that you're going to learn is newton's law of cooling now what newton's law of cooling says is that rate of change of temperature is proportional so let's write rate of change of temperature capital t is the temperature lower case t is the time is proportional to the difference between its own temperature so we are talking about an object, a body, something is proportional to the difference of its object temperature and the ambient temperature. So T is the temperature of the object at time T and T sub M is the ambient temperature which we call the temperature of the surrounding or the environment temperature so you have a cup of coffee you bring it to the room so T sub M is the temperature of the room surrounding environment 
temperature. So to make this proportionality to a equal, we have a proportionality constant k. So that's a factor. That's not a variable, right? So that's the difference between factor and a variable. We have variables here, temperature and time. Now we have the factor k. Now factor k is the uh, proportionality constant and it depends on material properties of the object. So like how how the temperature spread in a wood, how the temperature spread in a metal, faster, right, in a metal. So those things will be taken into the account in this model by simple k. So let's look at some examples. So here in the example, you buy a coffee in the library, a hot coffee, and you bring it outside where the outside is a cold winter day. So now we have our differential equation K T minus T sub M. Now what is the surrounding temperature? It says the temperature outside is 2 Fahrenheit, 2 degrees. So outside temperature is 2 Fahrenheit, you bring this cup of coffee outside, so your environment temperature will be not the temperature inside the library, but the temperature outside the library, which is 2. So our T sub M or the ambient temperature is 2, right? Okay, that's good. So we have the differential equation. Now, usually, I forgot to mention that proportionality constant, we assume it to be negative no matter what is the situation. Okay, so remember K is negative. Now, let's see what happens. So, you bring this cup of coffee to outside, what should happen? The coffee is hot and the outside is cold, right? So, what happens is the coffee is going to cool down right so the rate of change of temperature should be what it should be negative because the temperature should be going down is it negative well k is negative we know that t capital t is the temperature of the coffee so what is the temperature of the coffee it's definitely higher than two degrees right two degrees is the outside temperature coffee is definitely higher than two so 2 t minus 2 is positive right t minus 2 is a positive number so negative times positive you have negative as the output so your rate of change of temperature is negative that means the temperature is going to cool down now the other thing is how far this coffee can go what is the minimum temperature that coffee can achieve uh, in this environment can it go to freezing like negative 20 degrees no right it cannot go below 2 okay we are going to discuss this in broad manner in future videos um, but the the eventual temperature we call it the eventual temperature that means after long time let's say you spend thousand years outside and all the time the temperature outside is 2 degrees coffee can go up to 2 degrees but nothing less because the environment is 2 degrees. We call it the eventual temperature and as a mathematicians and for us we have a nice way to put it. So the temperature after time t that is what I wrote here okay when t goes to infinity that means after a large amount of time or the eventual temperature will be what in this scenario. Okay. All right. So let's discuss the opposite scenario where you have a metal bar and whose initial temperature is 10 degrees and you drop it into the boiling water which has 200 degrees. Now what's going to happen to the metal bar is it's going to increase the temperature right so the temperature will rise so your rate of change of temperature should be positive right temperature is increasing but how far metal can go again what is the eventual temperature now here the ambient temperature the environment temperature is 200 right you put take the metal bar and you put it to the environment of boiling water so your differential equation you can see as i have put that in the note 200 is the ambient temperature right the surrounding temperature 
Now the eventual temperature is after a large amount of time assuming the boiling water stays 200 degrees forever your metal bar going to increase the temperature up to 200 but nothing more than that. It's neither going to increase more than 200 or neither going to go below 200 after achieving 200. So the eventual temperature or the limit is 200 in this scenario okay right so that is some basic uh, stuff of the uh, differential equations but we are going to learn more advanced stuff in the uh, next video so thank you very much